Good news for Iowa Hawkeye fans. They have landed Lucy Olsen through the portal, who's even better than Caitlin Clark. All right, I'm joking. She's not, but still, it's an important landing for them. We will take a look at the implications as they adjust to life after CC. Before we start, if you like the content, then please subscribe to the channel as well. Please give the video a like if you find it worthy. All right, let's get into this. Lucy Olson is a shooting guard from Villanova who has one year left of eligibility. She entered the portal at the end of the season, and there was a lot of interest as she was rated number five in the portal on Charlie Cream's list, and this is because she can score the basketball. So last season, she averaged 23 points a game, which was a big jump as her freshman year, she only averaged seven points, sophomore year, 12 points, and then last year was the big jump with 23 points per game. And that was third in the country behind Juju Watkins and Caitlin Clark. Ah, yes, Caitlin Clark. So all the problems for Iowa are solved because Lucy is going to go there and fill the role of Caitlin Clark just as well as Caitlin Clark did. I don't think anybody believes that. But it is an important signing for them as she can shoot and take over that point guard role and score effectively. She's she's not as efficient as Caitlin Clark was as she averages 43% from the field and shot 29% from the three-point line, going 55 on 187 shots. But one thing her signing does do, it symbolizes the impact that Caitlin Clark has had on Iowa. As Olsen's a score, why wouldn't you go to Iowa? Obviously, Bluter's going to put you in a situation where you will get shots and a chance to score. Their philosophy is simple. We are going to get a whole bunch of shooters and then surround them or have a good center as well. And that's how we are going to play. And players are lining up. So this year, they've actually got the number nine recruiting class coming in, which I'll go through in a bit. But landing Olsen in the portal allows them to transition over from the four seniors that have graduated, Molly Davis, Gabby Marshall, Kate Martin, and of course, Caitlin Clark. It, it makes the transition not be as rough as their lineup. When I look at it, I think think it'll be Olsen at the point guard, Taylor McCabe at shooting guard. She can shoot. So both of those players can shoot. Then Sydney Falter, who filled in well when Molly Davis was out with her knee injury and showed things. I suspect they will have Hannah Stolke at the power forward and then potentially Addison O'Grady at the center position. Now, this could be manipulated a bit because obviously they're going to mix and match and see what's the best fit. As potentially, they might put Kylie Fearbach, she's six foot, in the starting lineup and then move Hannah Stolke over to the center position. They can, but as well, it depends on how the freshmen come in and look. As, as I mentioned, they have the number nine class coming in, which is highlighted by the number 40 recruit Ava Hyden. She is a 6'4 center from the state of Oregon. From what I've read and seen about her, it seems like she's able to go out on the perimeter a bit and is not just stuck in the post. So you could see them potentially, if she shows out well at the start of the season, cracking the starting lineup and then wanting to put Hannah Stolke together with her potentially. Now the other top 300 recruits that they have, they have a point guard, Aaliyah Guyton. She's rated number 58. She's a 5'8 point guard and can get to the basket, handle the ball well. And then they have two shooters. So one is Taylor Strimlow. He's rated number 91. She's 5'8". She's a point guard. She can shoot. She's a shooter. And then the other one's a shooter as well. Tegan Malingi, who's a 6'1 wing, and she can shoot. She's the number 64 recruit. So this season is really about mix and matching and getting the best lineup by the time the tournament comes around. And you have a lot of talent there to develop, which basically there's a future. They've taken advantage of the Caitlin Clark years because you can tell, because they were able to score a recruit from Oregon as well. The number five portal player in the portal wanted to come there because they knew it would be a good place to play. Supposedly the culture's good. So there is a future for Iowa after Caitlin Clark. It's hard to see it because she's such a tremendous, such a tremendous player. But there is, and not only that, the 2025 class already looks good for them. So they've signed Journey Houston, who's a 5'11 guard. She's rated number 50. As well, they got Addison Deal, 
She's a six foot wing from California. She's rated number 12. And if you listen to the local news after they sign, they usually do a story on them. They all say the same thing. Just really like the coaches and the way we interacted and the players as well. And it just felt comfortable. That That's what Addison Deal said, basically. And she's California. They're like, have you ever seen snow? And she's like, no, I haven't seen snow. And they're like, how do you feel about that? And she's like, I really like the players and coaches in the program. So that that is positive for Iowa that they have taken advantage of this and they are getting the top recruits from all over the country. And the formula seems very simple but brilliant in a lot of ways. We develop good post players like Cezano and Megan Guftison, who we will surround with shooters and we will score a lot of points with our shooters and just overall play and we will play up tempo. I think they will continue to do that and sort of play that Utah game where they are going to continue to try to outscore teams, which is fun for fans to watch. And obviously the players are keen to come to Iowa and play that sort of basketball. Now, reportedly the schools that were pushing hard to get Olsen include LSU, Maryland, Michigan, Tennessee, and West Virginia. Now, LSU sticks out as they just really haven't scored in the portal this year like last year. Although it's still early and Regan Beers is in the mix. So if they land her, then that's a home run and they're back in the game. But if they keep on striking out, then it's interesting. It's a very telling difference between them and Iowa and how they're able to capitalize in the portal and in recruiting after a star player leaves. Has the recruiting been impacted by the whole social media mess of player moms infighting? And then was a portal transfer like Lucy Olson hesitant to go to LSU after what happened to Haley Van Lith and how it was so unsuccessful? It is early, but if they continue to strike out in the portal and and struggle with the 2025 recruiting class, then it'll be a reasonable question to ask at that time. Now back to Iowa and how the signing of Lucy Olson impacts them. In terms of the Big Ten, potentially, I would say they're sitting fourth maybe in preseason predictions because you have UCLA and Southern Cal coming in along with Washington and Oregon, but I would think those would be the two favorites along with Ohio State. But it really should be interesting to see how the West Coast teams adjust to the Big Ten and travel and just the different environments and if they struggle. With with Iowa, I think they'll, they'll struggle with Southern Cal as Juju's a tough matchup for them. But they have a big freshman class coming in as well, so they might have some teething pain. So it might depend on when that game is with them and who's the home team and who's the away team. With UCLA, I could see Iowa giving UCLA trouble and spreading them out with all their shooting. Utah and Oregon State were able to upset them on the road this year, and and that's how they got them, basically. But obviously, it's so early, so it's hard to predict where these players are will go that are left in the portal and how that will impact things. But overall, if you're an Iowa fan, it looks like you're recovering as well as you can after the Caitlin Clark era. This is a good sign that you were able to land the number five, if you like, prospect in the portal. And you have two really strong classes lined up to come in. And that is really good as she is such a star. It's a huge vacuum when she left of emptiness. And they've done a really good job of eliminating that as much as possible. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a good night.